Separating the facts from the fear. It's what we strive to do every weekday at this time during our coronavirus Q&A. And we are very happy to be joined by Molly Cox, the president and CEO of SA 2020. Molly, I know your organization uh, prides itself on keeping your fingers on the pulse of the community, the good, the bad, the ugly out there. I know you've been very busy with all that's happening with COVID-19. Is there a way to quantify just how big an impact this pandemic is having on San Antonio? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, I don't know how you would the quantification that that's a technical term um, of COVID-19 is sort of an interesting uh, conversation to have. Right. Because it's not that COVID-19 just created brand new need. It compounded uh, the need that already existed in San Antonio and Bear County. Um, forcing sort of nonprofit organizations to need uh, more help because they've increased need, showing sort of funders and philanthropists that they needed to step up to the plate. We've seen economic uh, challenges with people losing their jobs and needing to claim unemployment. We're seeing a million, $200 million uh, shortfall in our city government budget right now. So um, the we're going to feel this for a minute right? Not just now, but into the future. And the idea really is, as an organization that sits uh, in the future all the time, we are consistently thinking about San Antonio's next decade. Um, how are we utilizing this time to really understand how targeted interventions really will help us recover? You mentioned some of those issues, Molly, um, in your answer to us just now. What, what do you see are some of the most problematic? Yeah, I think we've, um, for the last at least five-ish years, right, maybe a little bit more than that, the Digital Inclusion Alliance, which is made up of companies and nonprofits who have been working very specific in uh, education institutions, uh, spearheaded by the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas, um, actually, uh, has really been looking at, like, digital inclusion, the digital divide in San Antonio, Texas, uh, and Bear County. Um, the idea that there are some of our uh, community members who do not have access to not only computers, but broadband, the actual infrastructure to get you online in their neighborhoods. Um, and so the challenge had been presenting itself uh, as more and more of our work across, we've moved into the digital age, everything is online now. Um, and then what happens when something like a pandemic hits and we are forced into our homes when education and our work goes online where we are getting everything is coming to us via the internet and there are places in our community that don't have access, right? Um, so places like SAISD, for example, which had a five-year strategic plan to do one-to-ones, right? Give one um, Chromebook to a student so that every single student would be able to have a device at their house. That was a five-year strategy that they had to collapse into five days because we were now working online. Um, when we see things like unemployment claims, 75% uh, of unemployment claims right now are coming from uh, the internet. And we know that there are uh, areas in our community uh, that have less access to the internet. One in five homes in our city don't have a computer in their home or access to even get online. And that doesn't even cover understanding once you get online how to operate a laptop or a Chromebook or a smartphone or whatever, right? If you've never had any technology. So that's certainly going to be, I think that has elevated to, okay, we've got to band-aid it right now. We need to get people online, but we're going to need to think about what does this look like in the future as people start uh, re uh, entering society at this point. Um, certainly unemployment has been a challenge um, in a community that had one of the lowest unemployment rates, which is a problematic number because it's if they're in the system, et cetera, right? But we were like at 3.3% uh, unemployment rate. Um, but our underemployment rate, meaning people working full time and still living in poverty was going up in uh, San Antonio. Um, so when we see things like, hey, our unemployment claims have really skyrocketed, we're also saying, right, and the people who were underemployed who now don't have a job are also feeling an even bigger burn, right? Things like um, I, we had spoken to Vero Soto over at the Neighborhoods Housing Services Department in the city of San Antonio, who used to get about 53 phone calls a week 
um, for people asking for assistance um, on utilities or for internet, right? Uh, they've now gone to 5,300 phone calls wow. a week. A week. Um, and that's because, right, people who are used to having a I, I can get to my next paycheck and I don't need help. I can make it right. I can make ends meet are now not getting that next paycheck. Um, so yeah, I, Molly, you've got, list, you've got some great, you've got some great resources that are yeah. not only on the SA 2020 website, but also a website called we is greater than me. I love that. Talk about yeah. what that, what that provides. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, San Antonio is a, a, an amazing community. We know that there's many things to talk about. And one of the things that makes us great is oh, almost a decade ago, we sat down and created a vision for our future. And in that vision, we literally wrote a sentence that said, we are all responsible for our collective well-being. The people who live here wrote that sentence down in a community. And there's nothing like a global pandemic to show us that it's going, we are all responsible for our collective well-being. That our neighbor's health is our health, right? Um, and I think when we originally launched, we is greater.org. So SA2020 went home on the 13th of March. We, everybody, I think it's kind of the Friday the 13th was weirdly the last normal day many of us had. Um, we launched we is greater.org almost immediately because what the crisis did for us in our community was show immediately how quickly policies, programs, and services could be pivoted or shifted to meet community need. And basically what we've seen over a near decade of tracking community indicators and working with hundreds of multi-sector institutions, that positive community change comes when we shift our resources or our programs or our services to meet the need of the community that needs it most. Um, so our hope, right, and creating We Is Greater is not only to provide a space where somebody can go and see how individuals and organizations are stepping up in the middle of a global pandemic, um, but that you can also go there to see it as an archive of potential policies and programs and services that can be useful into the future for long term uh, progress. Great. Tracking what's happening now and tracking what we should tracking what's happening now and tracking what we should perhaps be doing in the future. Molly Mo Cox. Thank you, Molly. We're going to continue this conversation, of course, on the news at nine and tonight on the night beat. And one of the things I want to dive down on are where you're seeing these unemployment claims coming from and what that has to do with the digital divide. So we'll talk about that later. Thank you, Molly. We'll be right Thank back. Thank you.